Hey, this is Jason Clark here at South Dakota State University, and thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about sunflowers, needs for phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur, as well as micronutrients. So let's go ahead and jump into the presentation and get started. Traditionally, when we're looking at phosphorus and potassium guidelines, we use studies that look at increasing yield or relative yield against different levels of soil nutrients that are already in the soil. So when we do this, we tend to get a, at a figure that looks like this. We tend to increase yield as we increase our soil test nutrient level, and then at some point we level out. And if we get too high, sometimes we can even start to decrease yield. And then within this area, we tend to break out different points. This is where we get our soil test categories. So we start off with very low, low, medium, high, and then very high above that red line. So the lower that soil test value, the more likely they, they are to respond. So when we look at this area over here, the very low soil test categories has about an 80% chance that that crop will respond to additions of fertilizer. As we increase in soil nutrient levels, we decrease in the chance that we're going to respond. And once we hit this red line here, we become very high. And that red line is that critical nutrient value in which we say above this line we have a very low chance of response by adding fertilizer so we don't recommend it anymore. And if we look at our critical values, here we start off on our table we have our nutrients, our phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur, the different tests that we can, we can use depending on our soil conditions of pH, and then we have our very low to very high soil testing categories and their probability of response and then the parts per million of extractable nutrients in each of these areas. So once we get over here to this very high category, this is where we'd say no, to no longer apply fertilizers in each of these categories because we're not expecting much of a yield response from them. So in this we're first of all going to look at phosphorus. So if we have our two sunflower plants here on our left, we have our healthy plant and on our right we have our nutrient deficient phosphorus. You can see some stunting of, of the plant here as well as some darker green leaves and on these green leaves if we blow that picture up we can see these dead patches on the leaf margins. That's indicative of phosphorus deficiency. So currently if we look at our recommendations for phosphorus it's zero and there are some exceptions. So if that soil test gets very low to low, less than 7 parts per million Olsen or 10 parts per million Bray, we might want to add it for our sunflower plants. However, some evidence has shown that economically we're probably going to be better off by applying that phosphorus to the next crop after sunflower that's more economically and advantageous. So then moving on to potassium. We look at our potassium plant here again, our healthy one here on the left, and our potassium deficient one here on the right we can see deficiency symptoms. We see these wilted leaves right here as well as an intervenal chlorosis of the leaves here. And if we zoom that up, you can see a little bit better of the intervenal chlorosis on these leaf margins. So our current recommendation for potassium similar to phosphorus is zero. And that's really because in, in the areas where we grow sunflowers in the South Dakota, most of their soil test values are above that critical value of 160 parts per million. In addition, and we haven't seen any potassium deficiency in sunflowers, and we don't have any K-rate trials for sunflowers done in South Dakota because we've never seen a deficiency symptom here, so we haven't used it. However, there might be some coarse textured soils or sandy soils where that soil test value is below 160 parts per million. But likely, we don't want to do anything or do any experiments until we get to that lower range, you know, that low to medium at 120 parts per million before we're really going to maybe start to look at adding potassium. And what we want to do first is apply potassium strips of around 60 pounds of K2O per acre to see if we get a response to potassium. And one of the reasons here is if we look here at this map of sunflower protection in the U.S. and we zoom in here on South Dakota, we see this general area of sunflower production in the center part of the state. Now if we move that to the side and we look at this other soil test K, less than 150 parts per million from Agvice Labs, we see this area of the state here that we grow most of our sunflowers and we compare it to this area here where our soil test values below that critical value is very slim, 1 to 3%. So it's 
really reason that we don't apply potassium is because in this part of the state that we grow fertilizer or we grow sunflowers, we just don't, we have plenty of potassium in the soil, that potassium readily gives out the potassium to the plant, and the, so we don't need to add that extra fertilizer to the system. So next we're going to look at sulfur. So again we have our sulfur healthy plant here on the left versus our sulfur deficient plant here on the right. And we can see these upper leaves, the newer leaves, are more yellow. The darker leaves here on the older plant, nitrogen symptoms would be the lower leaves are more yellow than the upper leaves are that darker green color because it's a mobile nutrient more so. So if we look at our sulfur, our sulfur rate guidelines, generally we need three things. We first of all need to know our soil type. So we, here we have our soil texture triangle. We're going to divide it into three sections. These soil textures are considered fine. These are considered medium. The lower left soils are considered coarse textured soils, so more sand in these soils. So we need to know these categories. Next, we need to know tillage. We need to know conventional till soil versus the no-till or strip-till areas, different categories. And then lastly, we need to know soil test sulfur down to two feet. So just like nitrogen, we're going to go out to our field, pull out our soil probe, go down that first six inches, and then we're going to go down to six to 24 inches, separate that soil into different buckets, send it to the lab, and get our results back. We're going to take that 12 pounds of sulfur in the top, plus that 16 pounds in the bottom, and we're going to add that up for a total of 28 pounds of sulfur. So once we have these three things, we have our soil type, our tillage, and our soil test sulfur, we can then look at our sulfur fertilizer guidelines. So first of all, we need to remind us of our soil test sulfur here at 28 pounds. So in this soil, we're going to say it's a medium fine soil, run no-till, and then our soil test level is 28, so we're going to be in this medium category. So we're going to follow that down, and we're going to say our sulfur recommendation for this field would be 15 pounds per acre. However, if that sulfur soil test category got up to 40 or 49, then the recommendation would be zero. So next, we're going to look at our secondary and micronutrients. So when we think about our secondary nutrients, these are the ones that we think of, because not that they're secondary in nature, that we need less, they're less important, but we need less total quantity of them. And our micronutrients, which are important, but we just need less of them, are the ones that we see here. So generally, for each of these secondary micronutrients, we don't see deficiency symptoms, and so no application is recommended. So in summary, if we were to look at kind of a summary of the different fertilizers we need for our sunflower crop, we start off with nitrogen. The answer is yes, we need nitrogen. In order to calculate our recommendation, we need to know our yield goal, a soil test end level, our previous crop, and our tillage practices. So next, regarding phosphorus, we'd say in most cases, no, we shouldn't add phosphorus. Potassium is similar. Sulfur depends on the soil type, tillage, and our soil test sulfur levels. And then our secondary and micronutrients, again, we'd say no. And a lot of times we have a lot of no's here is because sunflowers are really good at scavenging nutrients from the soil. They're going to have deep roots, they're going to go down there, and they're going to dig, and they're going to find all the nutrients so they, that they need. And potassium is in high supply in a lot of the areas where where sunflowers are grown. So that's why we don't have recommendations for phosphorus, potassium, or secondary micronutrients. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or Chris Graham, uh, both extension specialists. And a lot of this research that you've seen today on these videos has been done by Chris Graham and also Dave Franzen up at North Dakota State University. And I thank them for their contributions to this as well. If you have any questions, feel free to email Chris or myself. And as always, you can find more information by following us on our social media websites as well as looking for future videos here at our YouTube channel, SD State Soil Fertility. Thank you for your time.